Hello and welcome to Growth Mindset Company, where we strive to provide insights and knowledge that propel you towards success. I am Sraven Kumar, your host, an expert in MEP and contracting, bringing you a detailed presentation on contractor document submission, specifically focusing on plans. This presentation is meticulously prepared by our co-founder and legal expert, advocate Gautam Sahar. In this introductory slide, we set the stage for an informative journey into the realm of contractor document submissions. This process is crucial for ensuring that all involved parties have a clear understanding of the project's specifications, requirements, and expectations. Our aim is to guide you through the intricacies of this topic with clarity and precision. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into each aspect of the submission process, offering you a wealth of knowledge to help you navigate the often complex terrain of contractual agreements and construction plans. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to Growth Mindset Company for more valuable content that fosters your professional growth. Let's embark on this journey together, slide by slide, enriching your expertise one topic at a time. In this slide, we present to you a comprehensive list of contractor documents for submission, focusing specifically on plans. These documents are vital in laying the foundation for a well-managed, legally compliant, and successful project execution. Let's unpack each of them. First, the Site Quality Management Plan and the Works Quality Management Plan. These are the blueprints ensuring that all construction activities meet the desired quality standards and comply with regulatory requirements. Next, the Site Rehabilitation Plan outlines the steps to restore the site post-construction, aiming to minimize the environmental impact and ensure the site's safety and stability for future use. The Interface Management Plan, coupled with the Stakeholder Register, is essential in managing interactions between different teams and stakeholders, ensuring smooth operations and effective communication throughout the project. The Environment Management Plan is pivotal in maintaining ecological balance, detailing strategies to mitigate environmental risks and promote sustainability within the project scope. The Physical Cultural Resources Management Plan is about preserving heritage and culturally significant artifacts that may be affected during construction. Moving on, the Temporary Traffic Control Plan and Traffic Management Plan are key to maintaining safety and order in the vicinity of the construction site, especially in managing the flow of vehicles and pedestrians. The Safety Management Plan is a critical document that outlines procedures and measures to protect workers and the public from potential hazards associated with construction activities. The Site Management Plan is a strategic guide for the overall management of the construction site, covering aspects from logistics to daily operations. For workforce accommodations, the Accommodation and Camp Management Plan ensures that the living conditions of site workers meet health, safety, and comfort standards. The Borrow Pit and Quarry Site Management Plan details the operations of sourcing construction materials from specific sites, ensuring that material extraction is done legally and sustainably. Lastly, the Logistic Plan outlines the strategy for the transportation of materials, equipment, and personnel to and from the site, aiming for efficiency and minimal disruption to the project timeline. By meticulously preparing and submitting these documents, contractors can pave the way for a project that not only meets its objectives but also upholds its social and environmental responsibilities. In this detailed exploration of the Site Quality Management Plan SQMP, we delve into the intricate layers that form the bedrock of project quality assurance. At its core, the SQMP is a document that doesn't merely outline quality requirements but orchestrates a symphony of meticulous planning, robust organizational structures, and stringent control processes. It's a dynamic blueprint that evolves from project conception to completion, reflecting a commitment to excellence that is paramount in construction and installation work. The reference to Clause 4.1-4.9 of the Yellow Book, Design and Build, isn't simply a bureaucratic requirement, it's a nod to the internationally recognized standards that ensure construction projects meet uniform quality benchmarks. This clause is the fulcrum around which the SQMP pivots, anchoring the plan in a legal and procedural context that is both structured and mandatory. The SQMP's content goes beyond generic quality platitudes. 
It is an actionable and accountable framework, including Quality Policy a declaration of the project's commitment to quality, setting the tone and direction for all activities. Quality objectives, specific, measurable targets that align with the project's goals and customer expectations. Organization, a detailed structure defining roles, responsibilities, and reporting lines, ensuring accountability at every level. Processes, a series of documented procedures and instructions that guide the project team in achieving the quality objectives. The timing of the submission, 28 days before the work commences, is a strategic maneuver. It provides a critical review window that allows stakeholders to align on quality expectations and to address any potential discrepancies between the plan and the project's practical realities. The purpose of the SQMP transcends compliance. It's a proactive catalyst for continuous improvement and risk mitigation, assuring stakeholders that quality is not a byproduct but a primary deliverable of the project. It ensures that the project's outcome isn't left to chance but is a result of calculated, deliberate actions aimed at achieving contract specifications to the fullest extent. Through this plan, contractors are not just building structures, they are constructing confidence, ensuring that every layer of the project, from the foundation to the finishing touches, is executed with precision and integrity. As we delve further into the Contractor Document Submission Series, we encounter the Site Rehabilitation Plan, a testament to sustainable construction practices. Referenced under Clause 0.11.11 no .11 of the FIDIC Design and Build Contract, this document bears a profound environmental and social significance. Rehabilitation is not merely about clearing away debris, it represents a deep-seated commitment to ecological stewardship and community respect. It involves a meticulous process to reverse the construction footprint, ensuring that the land is returned to its natural or agreed-upon state. This process encompasses the removal of surplus materials, wreckage, and any temporary works that facilitated the construction. The submission of this plan, slated for 28 days prior to the commencement of works, is a proactive gesture, demonstrating the contractor's foresight and dedication to minimizing the project's environmental impact. It is an opportunity for contractors to showcase their environmental ethics and for clients to ensure compliance with their sustainability mandates. The purpose of the Site Rehabilitation Plan goes beyond regulatory compliance. It is an ethical pledge to the future generations, ensuring that the land can continue to serve its natural purpose or be repurposed for community use. It's about leaving a legacy of responsibility, one where construction projects not only rise from the ground but also give back to the earth. This document echoes the sentiment that while we must use resources to develop and grow, we also bear the responsibility to restore and rejuvenate. As we guide you through these documents, we not only aim to build your understanding of their immediate practicalities, but also to instill a deeper appreciation for the lasting impacts our projects leave on the world. Continuing our exploration of the contractor document submission, we arrive at the Interface Management Plan, an essential tool that orchestrates the complex symphony of project interactions. Referenced in Clause 1.13 of the Yellow Book, the Interface Management Plan, along with the Interface Index and Stakeholder Register, serves as a nexus of project coordination. This document is not just a list, it's a dynamic map that charts the touchpoints between various project entities. It lays out the framework for interfacing among the myriad of stakeholders, detailing their roles, expectations, and the intricate web of interdependencies. The content of the Interface Management Plan comprises Interface Management Plan, the strategic guide that outlines the approach for managing interactions between different project segments and stakeholders. Interface Matrix, a visual representation or a table that clearly defines the points of interaction and the responsibilities associated with them. Stakeholder Register and Approval Requirements, a comprehensive list of all parties involved in the project, paired with their requisite approval protocols. Furthermore, a risk matrix and mitigation methodology is often intertwined within this document, offering a proactive approach to identifying potential issues and their solutions. Submission of this document is crucial and should occur 28 days after the project's commencement. 
This allows for the initial project phase to settle, giving a clearer view of the working dynamics that need to be managed. The purpose of this plan is multifold. To delineate clear lines of communication and responsibility, preventing overlaps and gaps. To establish a consensus on the approval processes, ensuring that decisions are made efficiently and effectively. To mitigate risks by preempting interface-related issues, thereby maintaining project integrity and timelines. In essence, the Interface Management Plan is the orchestrator of project harmony, ensuring that each stakeholder's performance is in sync with the overall project objectives. It is the backbone of project collaboration, enabling the smooth transition of tasks and information across various project phases. As we move forward with this presentation, keep in mind the critical nature of this document in knitting together the complex tapestry of construction project management. The next critical piece of documentation in our detailed journey through contractor document submission is the Environmental Management Plan EMP. This plan is a declaration of responsibility and foresight, enshrined in Clause 4.18 of the Yellow Book for Design and Build Contracts. The EMP is a comprehensive document that the contractor must prepare and submit to the engineer. This submission isn't a mere formality but a strategic and ethical obligation. It requires approval in the form of a notice of no objection, which implies that the proposed activities are harmonized with environmental protection norms and mitigation requirements. Let's break down the essentials. Environmental protection, the EMP must detail how the project will comply with local and international environmental regulations, including waste management, emissions control, and resource conservation. Mitigation requirements, it should specify actions to minimize the environmental footprint, like controlling runoff, reducing noise pollution, and protecting wildlife habitats. The timing of this submission, set for 28 days prior to the commencement of works, underscores the proactive nature of environmental stewardship in construction projects. It allows for any necessary adjustments to be made before the ground is broken, safeguarding the environment from the outset. The purpose of the EMP is profound. It transcends the administrative task of checking off compliance boxes. The EMP embodies a commitment to sustainability, ensuring that the project's legacy is not one of degradation but of integration with the natural world. It assures that the construction's success is measured not just in the edifices erected but in the negative impacts averted. With such planning, contractors don't merely construct. They cultivate a harmony between human ambition and the Earth's well-being, ensuring that progress today does not come at the cost of tomorrow's prosperity. Moving forward in our series on contractor document submission, we now focus on a document that intertwines the construction process with the tapestry of human heritage, the Cultural Resources Management Plan. This plan, enshrined in Clause 6.1 of the Yellow Book for Design and Build Contracts, is not simply a procedural requirement. It is a comprehensive approach to safeguarding cultural heritage and ensuring that construction activities do not inadvertently harm or destroy valuable cultural resources. The Cultural Resources Management Plan must detail the competent resources available, including local expertise or those arrangements made by the contractor. This ensures that those who understand and respect the cultural significance of the area are involved in its care. The timing of submission, set for 28 days prior to the commencement of works, is crucial. It allows for a thorough evaluation of how construction activities will intersect with cultural sites and provides a window for engaging with local communities, historians, and cultural experts. The purpose of the plan goes beyond mere conservation. It is about integrating the construction project within the cultural landscape respectfully and thoughtfully. This includes Identifying cultural artifacts, sites, or practices that may be impacted by the project. Developing procedures for the chance finds of cultural items during construction. Creating mitigation strategies to minimize the project's impact on cultural resources. By respecting the cultural context of the construction site, the contractor shows a commitment to preserving the richness of human history and heritage. This not only ensures compliance with local and international cultural preservation laws but also enriches the project's legacy. The Cultural Resources Management Plan is thus a vital element of sustainable development, ensuring that progress and preservation go hand in hand, acknowledging the past as we build the future. 
We now turn to a document that is crucial for maintaining the seamless flow and safety of the construction site and its surrounding areas, the Temporary Traffic Control Plan slash Traffic Management Plan. Outlined in Clause 4.7 of the Yellow Book for Design and Build Contracts, this plan addresses the dynamic and often overlooked aspect of construction, the impact on daily traffic flow and the provision of safe access. The plan covers several critical components. Traffic movement and scheduling. This includes the strategies for managing the flow of construction traffic, ensuring that the movement of vehicles and machinery is timed to minimize disruption to the public and project efficiency. Resource allocation for traffic control, detailing the necessary equipment, signs, and personnel required to manage traffic around the construction site. Temporary access roads, the design and location of temporary roads to support construction activities without impeding local traffic. Traffic projection during peak project phases, anticipating traffic volume changes as the project progresses, particularly during peak construction periods. Provision of access for site establishment, ensuring that there are safe and efficient entry and exit points for construction workers and deliveries. Detours and temporary infrastructure, planning for any necessary rerouting of traffic or temporary structures such as bridges needed during construction. The submission of this plan 28 days before the start of works is not just procedural, it allows for collaboration with local authorities and the community to preempt any traffic-related issues. The purpose of this plan is multi-layered. Primarily, it is designed to maintain public safety and minimize congestion, ensuring that the project does not cause undue interference in the daily lives of the surrounding population. Moreover, it's about ensuring continuity in commerce and emergency services, recognizing that the veins of any community are its roads and thoroughfares. This plan, therefore, plays a dual role. It is a testament to a contractor's commitment to public safety and efficiency, and it also serves as a communications tool, aligning project activities with the rhythm of the community's daily life. Now, we discuss a document of paramount importance, the Safety Management Plan. This plan, enshrined in Clause 6.7 of the Yellow Book, is the cornerstone of any construction project, reflecting a deep commitment to the well-being of every individual on-site and within the surrounding community. The plan details rigorous control measures and procedures aligned with the highest standards of law and good practice, such as the State BOCW Acts and Rules, Indian Electricity Acts and Rules, and international standards like BS 6164-2011. It transcends compliance, aiming for the most stringent measures to ensure the safety and health of all. It addresses preventative measures, strategies to mitigate risks related to fire, contamination, epidemics, and accidents, emergency response, procedures for immediate action in the case of health hazards or public nuisances, continuous monitoring, ongoing assessment of the site to preempt safety and health issues. The submission of this plan, within 28 days after the receipt of the Letter of Acceptance LOA, signifies the proactive steps taken to ensure safety before the project even begins. The purpose of this plan is twofold. It seeks not just to prevent accidents but to cultivate a culture of safety where zero accidents is the norm, not the goal. It is a dynamic document, adapting to each phase of the project to safeguard the physical integrity and health of everyone involved from start to finish. In essence, this safety management plan is more than just a contractual obligation, it's a moral one. It embodies the ethos that every life is valuable and that the true success of any project is not measured solely in its physical completion but in the preservation and enhancement of human life and health throughout its execution. As we continue our thorough examination of critical construction documentation, we arrive at the Site Management Plan, which is governed by Clause 4.3 of the Yellow Book under Design and Build Contracts. This plan is central to the organizational effectiveness and operational efficiency of a construction project. Within this document, the construction firm outlines Contractor representative the nomination of a highly qualified individual who will act as the primary point of contact and decision maker on behalf of the contractor. This person's credentials, experience, and qualifications are detailed for the employer's review and approval, ensuring the representative's capability to manage the complexity of the project. Site organization chart, 
a visual depiction of the project's management hierarchy and reporting structure. This includes the qualifications of the team members, establishing a clear picture of the expertise and resources dedicated to the project. The plan must be submitted 28 days prior to the commencement of work, aligning with the initial mobilization phase of the project. This allows for any necessary discussions or adjustments regarding site management roles and responsibilities. The purpose of this plan is multi-dimensional. To ensure that the project is led by individuals who are not only skilled but also fit the unique demands of the work at hand. To set up a clear governance structure, thereby avoiding confusion and ensuring a smooth workflow. To enable transparency and accountability within the project management team. In essence, the site management plan is not just an organizational chart, it's a blueprint for successful leadership and management throughout the life cycle of the construction project. It's a proactive approach to project governance that establishes a robust foundation for decision-making, communication, and responsibility. Moving forward in our series, the accommodation and camp management plan surfaces as a vital component of our construction project's ecosystem. Under the guidance of Clause 6.1-6.6 .6 of the Yellow Book, this document outlines the comprehensive approach to housing the project's most valuable asset, its workforce. Contained within this plan are essential elements such as housing details, specifics on the layout and facilities provided in the accommodation and campsites, ensuring they meet the necessary standards for comfort and privacy, safety and environment, policies and practices in place to protect the health and well-being of the workforce, including fire safety, medical facilities, and environmental controls, quality of life, measures to ensure that the living conditions contribute positively to the workers' morale and productivity, such as recreational facilities and sanitation services. Timely submission, 28 days before work commences, is critical as it allows for the establishment of a secure and fully functional living environment, ready for the influx of workers. The plan's purpose transcends mere compliance with contractual obligations. It embodies a commitment to the dignity and well-being of the workers. By ensuring a safe, healthy, and comfortable living environment, the plan lays the foundation for a motivated and productive workforce. This not only reflects a company's ethos towards its employees but also impacts the overall efficiency and harmony of the project. It is an investment in the human element of construction, which yields dividends in the form of loyalty, reduced absenteeism, and higher quality work. Advancing in our comprehensive overview, we encounter the Borrow Pit and Quarry Site Management Plan, an essential facet of construction that deals with the responsible sourcing of materials. This plan is dictated by the employer's requirements and underscores the contractor's responsibility for arranging borrow areas for fill material and quarry sites for ballast, aggregates, and rock material, all at their own cost. Here's what the plan includes. Sourcing strategy. Details on where and how the contractor will source the required materials, ensuring that all operations are conducted lawfully and sustainably. Environmental considerations. Procedures and measures that will be in place to minimize the environmental impact of excavation and material removal. Site rehabilitation. Post-extraction restoration plans for borrow and quarry sites to ensure they are returned to a natural state or repurposed in an environmentally conscious manner. The timing of the plan submission, 28 days prior to the commencement of works, aligns with the project's initial phase facilitating a seamless start to operations with all material sourcing clearly planned out. The purpose of this plan extends beyond logistics. It serves to ensure that the material extraction is managed efficiently and in harmony with environmental and legal standards, provide a clear framework for the restoration and mitigation strategies post-extraction, guarantee the health and safety of the workers involved in these operations, and the surrounding ecosystems. Through the borrow pit and quarry site management plan, the contractor demonstrates a commitment not only to the project's immediate needs, but also to the broader principles of environmental stewardship and sustainable development. 
Concluding our comprehensive review of the contractor document submission, we present the Logistic Plan, a strategic document required under Clause 4.16-7.7 .7 of the Yellow Book. This document is the capstone of project planning, ensuring the meticulous orchestration of materials, equipment, and resources throughout the construction life cycle. The logistic plan encompasses scheduling, a timeline for the movement of logistics, carefully planned to ensure timely arrival and deployment of resources without congesting the site, traffic management, Incorporation of traffic signs and coordination with local traffic authorities to minimize impact on surrounding roadways. Delivery details, a breakdown of each consignment, outlining the specifics of delivery to manage expectations and prepare for receipt. Equipment and machinery movements, coordination of the arrival and movement of contractor plant and machinery, ensuring seamless integration into the project's workflow. Compliance documentation, necessary customs and regulatory documents, ensuring all movements comply with local and international laws. Submitted 28 days before work begins, the logistic plan is essential for preempting and addressing potential logistical challenges that may arise during construction. Its purpose is to ensure that every aspect of the project's logistical needs is accounted for and managed with precision facilitate the smooth operation of supply chains, reducing the risk of delays and additional costs, minimize disruptions to the project and the surrounding community by anticipating and planning for all logistics-related activities. In essence, the logistic plan is the conductor of the construction symphony, ensuring that every piece is in place when needed and that the flow of materials and equipment harmonizes with the project's tempo. As we conclude our detailed journey through the contractor document submission process, it's essential to recognize that each document we've discussed serves as a pillar for the integrity and success of any construction project. These guides and plans shape the backbone of industry standards and uphold the values of safety, quality, and environmental responsibility. All right, be honest. Did you feel those gray muscles getting a little extra workout? If you walked away from this video feeling like a contract ninja ready to take on the world, you know what to do, smash that like button. We've all had those cold sweat moments pouring over a contract, worried we missed some sinister fine print. But not anymore. By sharing this video with your fellow construction warriors, you'll be helping them avoid those costly, you had one job, mishaps. Just think of all the friendly ribbing you'll get to dish out next time Jim from accounting starts sweating over legalese. Oh no, the contract is too confusing for you? Didn't you watch that growth mindset video I shared? Priceless. Speaking of which, do yourself a favor and subscribe to our channel right now. We're constantly cooking up new clips to keep expanding your contract kung fu. Hit that bell icon too so you'll know the second a fresh video lands. With our hard-hitting guidance, you'll go from cowering at the sight of a multi-page agreement to wielding it like a samurai sword. Lawyers won't know what hit them when you start slinging terms like indemnification and severability like it's no big deal. So what are you waiting for? Like, share, subscribe, and stay weird. It's the least you can do after we literally saved your career today.